Hey YouTube, this is Mindtech. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be telling you how to set up the GeekBees smart sockets with the GeekBees app. And I'm also going to tell you how to add that into the Google Home app and incorporate that in with your rooms and your routines. This is originally intended for my GeekBees smart socket review, which will be dropping later on this week. It was just too long to include into that. So let's get on with the video. So first, pop onto the App Store and search up Geek Bees. G -E -E -K -B -E -E -S. Download the first option, which is Geek Bees E Control. It does not have great ratings, and that is for good reason. There are some pretty blaring issues. I can be connected to Wi-Fi, and it won't think that I'm connected to Wi-Fi. <sighs> very frustrating. Open that on up and then it'll ask you to either log in or register. You can either register with an email account or a phone number, but I'm just going to log in. If you do have an email, it does not require a region code. It's kind of confusing because they have the field for both. And they'll probably ask things like, is it allowed to use your location? I haven't seen any security threats with this, but I don't know what this app is going to do with my location. I'm going to plug in the socket and I'm also going to plug in a little lamp to see See whether it's turned on or off. The LED on the side does not do a good job of determining that at least when it's not set up. Then I'm gonna go back to the app, click on plus socket, and then it wants to see this indicator is rapidly flashing. In this case it is, but if it is not, click on how to make indicator rapidly blink. What it asks you to do is power the device on one, two, three, nine, ten, turn it off, and then hold the reset button for five seconds. Three, four, five. And this has turned it into the other mode now, so I don't want and turn it on, and turn it off, turn it on, hold the reset button for five seconds. And then normally it'll turn off or on and then it'll start either slowly blinking or quickly blinking. Click on confirm indicator rapidly blink. Enter in your Wi-Fi password. This is don't hack me. five at the bottom. We do not want the 5 gigahertz network. This can only work on a 2.4 gigahertz network. So I'm actually going to click on change network. Wi-Fi settings enable just the 2.4. Switch back over there. It's now reporting the correct Wi-Fi network. Enter your SSID password, the one that you set up when you got your router. And then it's going to attempt a connection. Normally if this goes past 20%, you might as well cancel because it's not going to connect. My luck going to be good today. I've tried this about five or six times on tutorial. It's not that reliable. And there you go. It actually works. <laughs> wow. You can give it a name. I'm sure that it's memorable because this is the name once you add it into Google Home, you're going to have to refer to it. And then you can either share it with other people that have a GeekBees account or you can just add it right in. And as you can see, it's enabled now. So if I press the button there, it looks like it has a new firmware. Something nice that they're actually trying to improve these. So I'm actually going to upgrade. It's not wanting you to turn off the power. Just know that. And it looks like the update was a success. So now we have even more reliability. You turn the power button on, turns on, turn off, it turns off. And in here you can set up a timer. In eight hours, 30 minutes, you're going to change the power state. You can have a random which doesn't really make any sense. I think that this is just like turn it on every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday from 1 13 p.m. to 3 15 p.m. You can add in a circulate, which is, um, yeah, I honestly have never used these before. I'm going to do a timer just to demonstrate this ability for you. And in one minute, it's going to turn the lamp on. In the meantime, I'm going to pop on over to Google Home. Looks like Apple decided to uninstall it. The most worthless feature ever. <laughs> If I have it installed on my phone, that means I want it installed, Apple. We have about four, three, two. Right when that timer ended, it turned that lamp on. Five minutes later. Oh my gosh, how do you even call this uninstalled a feature? All right, so let's see. It's still installing! All right, now I'm going to pop onto the Google Home app. It's already signed in under, it looks like, my mom's account. So I'm going to log on to my account instead. And this would be the same process if you first installed the Google app. It's going to use your Gmail account. So I'm going to log in there. Once you log in, if you haven't created any homes, you have to create a home, but I'm going to use the one that I have right here. Now you can see all the devices that I have, and it looks like GeekBees has already picked up on the devices that I have because I am signed into that account. Lamplight is a lot better than it used to be before you had to unlink the account and relink it.
So you have to go to add, set up a new device, and then you need to click on have something already set up. If you've already set up these devices in a third party app, you're looking for smart life. This is already linked into my account. Before what you had to do was unlink. That's what I'm going to do just to show you how to link it up. Search up smart life, where it says search devices, smart life right there with the blue logo. Then it's going to ask you to log on to your Geekbees account where it says phone number slash email. Enter in whichever one you set it up with and click on link. And then you need to authorize Google and control all your information. It gets hooked in and you can choose from all the devices that you own. You have to set them up independently. But all of them are going to be added into the Google app. Then what? Okay, there should be like a continue button. Okay, I'm just going to exit out of that. When you scroll down, it has linked to you all the devices that you own. So if I turn that off, so you can see that turns off. Once you click on it, you can add it to a room. I have it configured with all of my single lights, my thermostat, everything is linked up to a room. Let's put this in the office, not the office, but the office. When I scroll down to office, lamp light right there. Also, once it is added into Google Home, you can ask her to either turn this on or off, or she can turn off all the lights for the room. Hey, all who turn off the lamp light. Sure, turning off two lights. Google, turn the studio off. Okay, turning off the studio light. Hey, turn on the office lights. Okay, turning the lamp light on. And you can also incorporate this into your routines. If I manage my routines, you can automatically have it adjust lights for the light lamp. It'll automatically turn that on. And for the studio lights, it'll turn them off and then save that routine. Hey, Google, Google, I'm home. Hi, text exchange. Welcome home. It turned that off and it turned this on. Turn on the studio lights. That's honestly about it, guys. It's pretty easy to set up as long as it'll work correctly. Trust me, I have spent hours trying to record this segment. This one right here, I'm pretty sure was defective. Make sure that you're on that 2.4 gigahertz network. Make sure you are connected to a Wi-Fi network. And once you're in the GeekBees app, try out AP mode. I have had some better luck in the past with this. To get it into the mode, it's going to be a slow blink instead of a fast blink. The same steps as you took before. Only you have to hold it again for an extra 5 seconds after you've already held it for 5 seconds. Alright, so I hope you got some very informative information. Make sure to check out my review once it drops. Again, this was intended to be part of the review. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you all in the next one.